Hello students. In our today's English one class, we will be doing chapter number three. I am born, page number twenty six. In this chapter, Charles Dickens, who was a novelist and English writer, discusses about the life of David Copperfield. Okay, this entire novel discusses about. um the personal life of david copperfield and the experiences of this character this story which we are going to read is an extract from the novel it is just a small extract from this novel by charles dickens now all of you see the first paragraph the book is about the life of david copperfield and is told by david himself david was born in england around the year 1820 underline this line His father had died six months before he was born. Here he talks about the time just before he was born. His great aunt, Miss Betsy Trotwood, comes to visit his mother for the first time after the death of his father. Okay, in this very paragraph, you all will underline line number two as well as line number four. This paragraph gives us an introduction that about the chapter. Okay, that um about David's birth. No, where he was born, he was born in England around the year eighteen twenty, and before he was born, his father expired six months. Six months before he was born, his father expired. Then here he talks about the time just before his birth when one of his great aunt, whose name is Miss Betsy Trotwood, visits his place for the first time. My great aunt Miss Betsy Trotwood was the only person alive on my father's side of the family. She lived alone in a cottage in a small village on the sea coast. My father was once her favorite nephew, but not after he got married. She was angry because he had married a very young woman. My father never saw his aunt Betsy again. A year after the marriage, my father died. One evening before i was born my mother was sitting by the fireside she looked up and saw a strange lady coming up the garden path she at once knew that it was miss betsy trotwood as she had heard about her from my father in these two paragraphs david copperfield will di- will discuss about his mother as well as his aunt okay here my no you can see the very first word which is my my here refers to this narrator whose name is david who is the central character of this story he says that his great aunt miss betsy trotwood was the only person who was in his father's side who was alive okay and where she lived he also describes that she lived in a small cottage in a village which is located on the sea coast then he said that his father was one of her aunt's favorite nephew okay until the time he got married but just after his marriage you no know, she he was no more the favorite nephew of this aunt why because she was angry with him why she was angry because he had married a woman who was a very young age okay he had married a woman of very young age that is why his aunt was angry with him and what happened that after his marriage no his father never saw his aunt again and after the marriage just after one year passed no the sad part came to his mother's life when his father died okay now one evening what happened um, david says that one evening before i was born my mother was sitting by the fireside okay the fireplace you all understand no we all have seen in tvs and all no um how the fireplace is made you know inside the house so um his mother david's mother was sitting in the fireside and when she looked up okay she looked out of the window what she saw she looked up that a strange lady was coming towards the garden path okay towards their home and looking at this strange lady she could at once make out that it was none other than miss betsy trotwood now how she could make out she has never seen this lady yes or no but she could make out because her husband has discussed about this lady no many a times okay i hope so till here it will be clear to you miss trotwood held herself 
very straight as she walked up to the house with a serious face. Instead of ringing the doorbell, she looked through the window, pressing her nose against the glass. My poor mother was very frightened at this strange behavior. She got up from her chair at once and stood behind it. Miss Betsy ordered her to let her in, and my mother went to the door. Mrs. David Copperfield, I think, she said. You have heard of Miss Trotwood, I am sure. In this lines, we will see about the strange behavior of this lady who comes to visit David's mother. No, whenever we visit someone's place, what we do? We directly do not enter their house. Yes or no? Because this is not good manners, we know. What we do? We ring the doorbell. Or if there is no doorbell, what we do? We knock the door. Yes or no? But this woman has not done any of such things. Instead, what she do? She was looking through the window, pressing the nose. Now, when, we'll, we, when we come near the window and we look at the opposite side, what happens? Our nose gets pressed. Yes or no? So the same thing happened with this lady and David says that my more that my poor mother was very frightened okay of this kind of strange behavior because usually people don't do this kind of activities yes or no then what she did David's mother she got up from her chair at once no she was afraid yes or no so she got up at once and stood behind the chair now can you imagine that how much afraid she was now, though this lady was outside the house, still the mother was so afraid that she stood up and she was standing just behind the chair. And what Miss Betsy did now, Miss Betsy ordered her, okay, ordered David's mother to just let her inside the house. Then, uh, what, how she gave her introduction? She said that, Mrs. David Copperfield, I think she said, you have heard of Miss Trotwood, I am sure. Yes, please come in, said my mother. Take off your cap, child, says Miss Betsy, and let me see you. My mother obeyed, and as she did so, her thick beautiful hair fell all about her face. Why, bless my heart, exclaimed Miss Betsy, you are just a baby. Here, in this lines, what happened? After this lady wanted to enter the house, Miss um, David's mother, she welcomed her. Wholeheartedly, she welcomed this lady. And after this lady entered the house, no, she again gave another order to this David's mother. She wanted David's mother to just take off her cap and what happened? David's mother obeyed. Obeyed the order given by Miss Betsy and therefore after she obeyed, no, after she took off her cap, what happened? Her beautiful thick hair fell all about her face. And looking at that, Miss Betsy exclaimed that you are just a baby, means David's mother looked just like a small baby. My mother looked very young for her age. She hung her head as though it was her fault and began to cry. She thought she felt my aunt touch her hair with a gentle hand. When she looked up, Miss Betsy was seated with her legs stretched out and looking at the fire. Then what happened? After hearing, no, um, after hearing that, David's mother hung her head as though it was her fault and began to cry. In these lines, what we understand that she was putting her head down. Okay, her head was down, and she started crying because she was afraid. Okay, already she was afraid, no, by this strange behavior. And after hearing such kind of thing, she became more afraid, and therefore she thought that it was all her fault that her ears were onto her face okay and she started crying and what she thought she thought that the aunt was touching her here with a gentle hand but when she looked up no there was not any such thing why because miss betsy was seated with her legs stretched out no in the armchair she was sitting properly near the fire and she was not doing any of such things what do you call your girl I don't know whether it will be a girl, said my mother. I don't mean that, said my aunt. I mean your servant girl. Pigotti, said my mother. Pigotti, replied my aunt. How on earth did she get such a name? It's her surname, madam, said my mother. Pigotti, could you fetch your mistress some tea? Cried Miss Betsy, going to the door. She's not well. Hurry. So, oh. Now, here a conversation goes on between David's mother and Miss Betsy. 
so miss betsy was talking about the servant girl okay who was working at david's home but david's mother was unable to recognize when she asked the information about the girl okay when she said that what do you call your girl david's mother was unable to understand and therefore she said that i don't know whether my baby is going to be a boy or a girl okay then miss betsy cleared her doubt saying that no 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 i don't mean that i mean your servant girl okay i am talking about your servant girl then david's mother replied saying that her name is pigotty then miss betsy was totally amazed hearing the name and she said that how on earth did she get such a name okay then david's mother said that no no it is just her surname madam then miss betsy she asked pigotty to bring some tea for david's mother because she was not looking well you know david's mother was very scared you yes know and therefore what happened her face became very pale okay and therefore miss betsy wanted pigotty to fetch some tea you were speaking about the child being a girl said miss betsy i have no doubt it will be a girl now child from the time of the birth of this girl perhaps boy my mother said i tell you it will be a girl returned miss betsy now in this conversation between david's mother and miss betsy there was a kind of debate between them okay miss betsy was totally con- confident okay she was confident she was sure that the baby will be a girl okay the baby will be a girl but david's mother said that perhaps i think it will be a boy but again david's mother as she was saying that it will be a boy miss betsy she did not agree with david's mother and, and instead she said that no no i am sure that it is going to be a girl i hope so till this lines it is clear to you okay all of you will go through this lines properly so that you understand it better from the time of the birth of this girl i am going to be her friend i want to be her godmother you should call her betsy trotwood copperfield as she should be well brought up can you keep accounts and take care of a house yes i can not much but mr copperfield was teaching me and my mother broke down no no don't cry any more said miss betsy you will make yourself ill and that will be bad for you and the baby you must not do that now in this lines in the conversation we will come to know that miss betsy she was totally sure okay she was sure that the baby is going to be a girl and she was so sure that she even decided a name before the birth of the child she even decided a name for the girl and the name is betsy trotwood copperfield in the third line of this page you will see the name of the girl given all of you will underline this okay and she wanted to be the godmother godmother of this child now godmother you you know godmother means a person who promises to be responsible for another's child means she was she was wanting to be you know she wanted to be responsible for this child and so she said that i want to be her godmother i am going to be her friend and you give her this name and she should be well brought up okay she also ordered the mother that she should be well brought up then she again inquired that can you keep accounts and take care of a house means she was wanting you know that whether the mother will be able to take care of the baby of the entire house because the mother was very young yes then david's mother replies that yes i can take care of but not much mr copperfield no he he taught me many a things and saying all these things the mother she became very upset and she started crying Bro- broke down means what that she started to cry in this picture it is visible no can you see the picture if you look at it you will be able to see no there is a conversation going between the two ladies and the lady which is crying is david's mother then miss betsy said that no there is no use of crying anymore please don't cry anymore because this will make your you make you ill as well as it will be bad for your baby and therefore she said that she should not cry anymore this quieted my mother what has your husband left you asked miss betsy a short while later mr copperfield left me an income of a hundred and five pounds a year madam please underline the amount a hundred and five pounds a year said my mother pigotty came in with the tea 
she saw how ill my mother looked and sent for the doctor at once now when the conversation was going on no after a while what happened miss betsy was again inquiring that no if you have amount if you have some amount of money or not to take care of the baby okay to rear the baby if she has certain amount of or not then david's mother said that yes mr copperfield has left certain amount and the amount was a 105 pounds a year when it means we say in indian terms this is a pensions getting pensions so um, similarly here mr copperfield has also left pension and that was 105 pounds a year now after when this conversation was going on between these two ladies then what happened the servant the maid pigotty she came in with the tea and while she brought the tea no she saw the condition of david's mother that she looked very ill and without saying any word without uttering any word without saying anything she at once went to call the doctor when mr chilip the doctor and pigotty took my mother upstairs to her room miss betsy sat in the living room waiting hours passed mr chilip came downstairs he saw miss betsy walking up and down the room well doctor how is she asked aunt betsy mrs copperfield is quite as comfortable as we can expect a young mother to be you will soon be able to see her so here what we see we see that mr chilip okay the doctor's name was mr chilip you will underline this and pigotty you know both took david's mother upstairs to her room and miss betsy was sitting in the living room okay she was waiting for the doctor to come downstairs and and see the condition of david's mother after hours after several hours when mr chilip came downstairs he saw that miss betsy was walking up and down the room she was very much afraid we can say she was also a caring no so she cannot sit at one place yes or no and so she was move, moving from one place to another okay intention we can say then she asked the doctor the well, doctor how is david's mother now how is she how is the lady okay then mrs copperfield then the doctor said that yes mrs copperfield is quite as comfortable okay she was quite as good as we can expect any young mother to be when she was healthy she was all well and he also said that miss betsy will soon be able to see david's mother and she how is she said aunt betsy mr chilip did not seem to understand the baby said my aunt how is she madam returned mr chilip i thought you knew it's a boy now in this conversation going on between the doctor and miss betsy where miss betsy was inquiring about the baby which took a birth because she was already confident no that the baby is going to be a girl then she was inquiring about the girl and the doctor was unable to understand why can you say why the doctor was unable to understand because the child was a boy yes or no so the doctor said that oh i thought you knew that it is not a girl but a boy here what happens now the aunt's prediction went wrong no because she was already very much confident yes or no she already predicted that the baby is going to be a girl now let's see what the aunt does my aunt did not say a word she put on her bonnet and walked straight out of the house she never came back again and that was how i david copperfield was born here david copperfield says that when the aunt came to know that it is no more a girl but it's a boy the child is a boy what she did she at once put on her bonnet and walked straight out of the house you all know it was winter time no because when the miss betsy came to the house and what was david's mother doing she was just sitting by the fireside therefore when we do when we sit near the fireside in the winter days yes or no so what she did she just put on her bonnet and she walked straight out of the house bonnet we are understand no hat which is tied under the chin no um, especially girls will know it better yes no because whenever you come out of your house what happen your mother always asks you to put on the bonnet yes no so that you do, you do not catch cold and what miss betsy did miss betsy again never came back again to that place this was the first and the last time when she came to david's house and again she never came back again and david copperfield says that this is how i was born with this we have come to this end of this chapter i hope my explanation is clear to you please read the lines thoroughly
and try to understand it. Okay? Thank you.